Many thanks for staying with us here on Newsdesk. To some more stories now, and uh, there's a shortage of passport forms. Uh, that situation has been recorded nationwide as I speak to you. It's unclear the reason for the situation, but uh, let me try and quickly get you an update on the situation. Uh, joining me on phone now is Alex Intraqua Grant. He is the director of passports here in Ghana. He's joining me over the telephone lines now with some more on this. Uh, so, Grant, uh, good morning. Many thanks for your time on Newsdesk, sir. Hello, sir. If, if you can hear me, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. And, uh, right. Thanks so, for, for the now. many Ghanaians who want passports now, getting access to the form, even to begin the process with, is a major challenge as I speak to you. Why is that the case? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, good morning to your uh, church. Uh, um, I have been speaking on uh, several platforms this morning concerning this issue about the publication that Graphic uh, has carried out today uh, concerning the shortage of passport uh, application forms. And uh, I have explained extensively that when it comes to uh, value books, uh, like passport booklets and the forms, we have an institution that is mandated or has the responsibility of uh, issuing those uh, books. And the institution is the controller and accountant general department. So when it comes to any shortages or uh, 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 anything related to that, they are the uh, institutions that are uh, capable of speaking to the issue uh, authoritatively. Mm. As I sit at the passport office now, uh, we have a lot of applicants at the, uh, uh, our passport application center who, have, who are already in a queue trying to get their passport, passports done. And that does not give us any indication that, uh, that uh, it ran out of uh, uh, passport forms. But the information came to us and we spoke to controller some time about a week or two ago. And uh, we were not given any indication that uh, controller has run out of uh, forms. Okay. So, sir, I, I want to find out from you the exact role the controller and accountant general's department plays in the issuance or in the production of these passport forms. They are the ones who print the forms and sell the forms to the banks, for the banks to also sell to the general public before we can also process them. So that is how uh, it is when it comes to value books. Even the passport booklets, they uh, 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 supply them to the passport office before we can issue them to, to applicants. From the little I know, uh, usually in such instances, uh, the authority or the, uh, I'm speaking of uh, in this instance, uh, the passports division, you are supposed to make a request to the Controller and Accountant General's Department for them to then begin the process. Uh, at what it, point... It, it, is, it, is, it is never true. It is never true? Yes, because we don't have anything to do with the forms. It is when uh, we need passport booklets that we write to them for them to supply when we realize that the stock is going down. But for the uh, forms, we don't even monitor the stock ourselves because they sell directly to the banks and not to the passport office. And they haven't given any any reasons why there's this delay? Pardon? They, they haven't issued any reasons to the passport office. Why there's a delay? Uh, why there's well, a bit uh, of a shortage on the market? Well, for, for the, the little that, that I know is that uh, I think this, uh, since morning they've also been speaking on the issue to some radio stations. And uh, I think the best person to address the issue squarely is uh, the controller and accountant general as well. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, f finally, before you go, sir, I know that uh, the passport office, your uh, department, you have been trying so hard to uh, minimize the challenges that many Ghanaians go through, usually before acquiring a passport. You did speak to uh, some of our, my colleagues uh, some time back about some interventions that your outfit was putting in place to ensure the situation is a lot more, uh, is a lot smoother than it has been over the past few years or so. Uh, how is that coming out? Because already, we, uh, as, as I speak to you, we still see huge queues, very long winding queues at the passport office on a daily basis. Yes, uh, I'm not surprised that uh, we have a long winding queues at uh, a craft park. That is because we have also stopped applicants from coming to the head office to uh, process their passports here. The reason is that there's nowhere in this world that you that uh, the, 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 the heart of where passports are printed
that you see anybody writing around or hanging around. And apart from that, when you come to the head office, the staff here are supposed to work on the numerous applications that we have in our database so that people will, uh, applicants will have their passports on, on time. And the same staff are uh, on daily basis besieged by applicants who want to possess their passports at the head office. So uh, we have removed our cameras and everything and sent them to the demonstration so that nobody comes to the head office for us to be able to have the time and space to be able to process the passports that we have in the database. At the thermal station, there's a capacity uh, they can handle every day. We have third time and, uh, and again that we can deal with maximum 200 passport applicants. So when the, the capacity is uh, exhausted, we don't want to, yeah, we don't want to stress our equipment up and then overburden the applicants, uh, the, the, the staff also. So we have six passport application centers in Ghana. We have Accra Park in Accra. We have Ko, we have Tamale, we have Kumase, we have Takwadi, we have Sunyani. Unfortunately, a lot of applicants are traveling from far and wide from these uh, uh, regions to come to Accra to process their passport with the idea or the mindset that when they come and do their passport in Accra, they will get their passport ASAP, which is false. It is very misleading because I have been to uh, Tamale not quite long ago, and around 3 o'clock, I saw only three applicants at the uh, Tamale Passport Application Center. And on that day, the OIC told me they had not possessed even more than 30 applicants. So why would somebody want to travel from there to Accra to possess? Uh, the, so the, so the clearly you seem to be making some strides there. You, you have decentralized the system, but the numbers here in Accra are still huge. What, what more can be done? What more is being done about the situation? What we are trying to do is to increase the capturing the um, equipment at the demonstration, which, uh, as you called, I was in a meeting uh, mm -hmm. having discussions with uh, some uh, 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 institution stakeholders. And uh, apart from the capturing uh, equipment that we want to increase, we have an issue about uh, maybe the, 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 uh, the, the premises that we will need to uh, find the most suitable premises for, for, for uh, the uh, passport application center. Uh, that is also being discussed. And uh, maybe the need for the region also to have more than one passport application center is also being discussed. But the fact still remains that those who are migrating from all those regions that have passport application centers would do us a great deal of good if they remained in those regions and went those passport application centers to process their passports rather than coming to Accra. Now, we have we, we have also uh, established a call center. And when applicants want to check their status, instead of walking to the passport office, they can sit in, their com in the comfort of their homes or offices and call those numbers. And when they do that, they will get every detail that they want to have about their uh, uh, application. And so I think Ghanaians will have to cooperate with us, and they have to also give us that uh, space for us to be able to uh, uh, go ahead with the sort of reform that we want to put into the system uh, so that uh, uh, the uh, issue of uh, 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 congregation and what we are the passports of this will be, will be uh, uh, eradicated. So, so as things stand now, all these remain proposals that are on the table, uh, none of them is currently... Uh, being being pursued as we speak no it's not like they are on 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 on, uh, on the table as we speak uh i have spoken to you that uh, i've already told you that we've moved some of the cameras yes you, you mentioned about you, you, you spoke about yes. this so we have about five or six cameras now we want to increase it to about 10 or more uh but the boots are 10 so we want to increase it to 10 and uh, as uh, i mentioned we have these numbers 02990 one one two hundred to two zero three uh, as the numbers that applicants can call to check the status of the application so that uh, before you even uh, uh, uh any of the passport application centers you would have been known your uh, passport number before going there uh that is uh, already been uh, uh, uh it's already in operation and the issue about uh, uh having more centers that comes the right uh, purposes and then uh, the equipment to be installed. So that, if you say it's a progress, that I would agree. Okay.
Mr. Grant, many thanks for your time on his desk this morning. We we'll, we'll, we'll actually be getting in touch with you pretty shortly for a lot more on this. And uh, that was uh, Alex Intraqua Grant. He is the director of passports here in the country. He's been telling us that what well, the shortage of uh, the passport forms if you have uh, experienced such a situation over the past few days or weeks well it's not a result of uh, uh, their inefficiencies or any any such thing or the problem they are saying is as a result of uh, the controller and accountants general's department their failure to print these forms because they are solely responsible for that we are trying the lines to uh, get a response from the Controller and Accountant General's Department as and when we're able to get that particular response, we will bring back that story to you. Okay, um, I believe uh, we can now do continue with that story because I'm told that the Public Relations Officer of the Controller and Accountant General's Department, okay, so that line has dropped once more. Once we have him, we'll bring that story to you. But away from that, and these are known to produce honey, sweet honey, but these things and the pain of a strike is often a stark opposite of the taste of the sticky substance they produce. But did you know that not all bees stink? Well, in our Ghana Man series today, join us is Kwabna Owusuan Prochum visits the central region village of Abrafo where bees don't stink but produce the best honey. Very often, we all look for a land of milk and honey, a land where we can enjoy the riches of nature and what it has to offer us. Well, right here in Ghana, I have found a place where honey literally flows. Welcome to the International Stingless Bee Center. Now, I have here with me here the director and founder, Professor Peter Kwapon. Of this is a place where you meet all sorts of bees that won't stink you. After assuring myself these bees won't harm me, I headed to the sheds. The first is a tongue-twisting hypotrigona shed. Professor Kwapon explains how efficient these bees are. Hypotrigona is one of the scientific uh, names or, or given to one of the smallest bee on earth. And it's common in our communities in Ghana. A lot of people call it Mimna. The bees consist of three different, the queen, one queen, several thousands of female which are the workers and then the males which we call drones a few males and in this house every bit every family is detected by the scent on them so even though you can see the beehives together each bee is specific they come and return to their own nest but they never make a mistake see beads without tasting honey no way i'm told the meli ponula shed has lots of honey, obviously. That's my next destination. Hang on, don't go closer. This one can be a bit... Uh, they can be a bit stubborn. Stubborn. Although they don't sting, these bees have an interesting defense mechanism. But in the local name, they call it Tifuye. They attack you by entering into your hair. So they come a lot of them into your hair. And by entering your hair, they try to pull out your hair with their mouth pass. And that would let you run away from them from disturbing them for the love of honey though i think i'm willing to beat this defense can you see honey oh yeah that's honey. Do you like to taste honey oh, sure why not <laughs> this is fresh honey right from the right from on a root and even in any bottle one. yeah it's very <laughs> you can eat you can eat this all day it's sweet <laughs> at this point it was difficult to leave the honey and continue the tour we all know beads to produce honey but in fact, they produce another substance that is of great medical and financial benefit. We have propolis, which is a natural antibacterial, which destroyed all kinds of bacteria that affects human beings and other animals. So we have found that the, the propolis is good against toothache, cough, common cold, asthma, foot rot, and... Uh, Many, many other diseases which are the results of bacteria. Sadly, these bees are now facing grave danger. There's a lot that humanity is doing to uh, kill these bees, destroy these bees. These bees live in the forest in tree cavities naturally. So as we cut down the forest, as we bulldoze this forest, make way for mining, uh, sand winning, 
uh, building and all kinds of bushfires we are destroying their homes we are destroying them and once they go a farmer will plant about 10 acres of uh, crop he only harvests about one acre out of the 10 acre so it's like he has invested for nothing the next time you are enjoying nani perhaps you should pause to think that one day these bees will not be there to produce the honey if we do not take good care of our environment. For Joy News, Kwabna Oso Amprechum. Some food for thought there. And uh, you're watching News Desk here on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. Time now for us to take a break. When we come back, Imanola Bajiriafi has a lot more in business. Stay with us. <laughs>